Greetings, people whom God loves, people for whom God gave his only son. As we meet today, this Friday, we know that we are in troubled times. So I want to begin with reading, not singing, I wish I could, for you a line a verse from the solid rock. His oath, his covenant. His blood support me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, He then is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. On Christ the solid rock we stand. Heavenly Father, lead us. Lead us and lift your people higher in your love and victory today through your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, the title of today's message is The Covenant. Of course, we've been talking about who Jesus is, and he is the covenant. Jesus Christ is God's chosen covenant. His God's sole delight, his anointed with the Spirit. He's upheld by God himself, and he is the one who will bring justice to the world. One person. The Son of God will bring justice to the nations. And he will not be disheartened or crushed until he has established just in the earth. Justice in the earth. Nothing will stop him. Not humiliation. Not ridicule. Pain. Apparent failure. Or even death will stop him from his goal of bringing justice justice to the earth. I want to begin reading from Isaiah 42, verse 1, and then 5 through 7, telling us about the covenant of Jesus. Behold my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. And verse 5, thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and its offspring, who gives breath to the people on it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you, speaking to Jesus, I have called you in righteousness. I will also hold you by the hand and watch over you. And I will appoint you as a covenant to the people, as a light to the nations, to open blind eyes, to bring out prisoners from the dungeon, and those who dwell in darkness from the prison, to bring them out. So God, according to his word, the creator of all, has called and equipped his son in righteousness. Thus, what he is doing is entirely in line with all he has ever said or done. And in that righteousness, he sends his son to extend his righteousness, his righteous reign everywhere. Although God sent Christ, he did not send him alone. For God promised as we just read, I will also hold you by the hand. Thus we know the nails that went through our Savior's hands penetrated both Father and Son. We have another testimony to the truth that rejection of Jesus is rejection of God himself. Jesus is presented by God as the covenant and the light for the people of his creation. For the people. He's the covenant 
for his people, the light for his people. Jesus, both man and God, is the only one who can be the covenant joining God and man and bringing unholy people to all the promises of God. All those promises in Christ, according to 1 Corinthians 1.20, are yes. God's promises are in Jesus and dispensed by Jesus alone. The earlier covenants such with Israel, such as Deuteronomy 28.1, required their obedience to enter the covenant. Quote, now it shall be, if you diligently obey the Lord your God, being careful to obey all his commandments, but in the new covenant, the only requirement is faith that receives God's Son as Savior. To those who receive him, he gave the right to become children of God. John 1, 12. God gave us Jesus the covenant. All this, all his covenant, all his promises are for believers because he is the keeper of the, of the covenant. Jesus is the giver of the ability to follow him. We are heirs with Jesus and in him we are being changed into his likeness. But again, only the grace of God gives the life of Christ to us in his spirit. We must look to him and not to ourselves for admittance into the kingdom and the power to live out kingdom life. According to verse 7, Jesus God's covenant to the nations is a light to open blind eyes, to free us from darkness and prisons. Notice, God is not saying in this place that he removes physical blindness and frees people from prison bars, although Jesus does do these things. But in this context, he is addressing the situation of humanity without Christ. Man's normal condition is not normal. But Jesus, the light, frees us from all blindness to the truth, from the hidden ways of the enemy, and as he says, he removes us from all bondage to sin and captivity to fear, depression, and deceit. As we live in and with Christ, we will shine in Jesus is on your side. He is on our side. According to Hebrews 12, 22 through 28, which we shall read before we begin the final portion of today's lessons, we read Hebrews 12, 22 through 28, Therefore strengthen the hands that are weak and the knees that are feeble, and make straight paths for your feet. I'm sorry, I got ahead of myself. <laughs> Let me begin again. Because I said 22, and 22 begins. But you have come to Mount Zion, and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to myriads of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, who are enrolled in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood which speaks better than the blood of Abel. See to it that you do not refuse him who is speaking. Let's pause here. I want to pick up with these words. In Christ, the mediator of the new covenant, we come into, king, into the kingdom, come into the kingdom of God. 
and thus are what he just said. We are with God, with the angels, with saints, and Christ's blood, which speaks of cleansing, forgiveness, and more. We learn later in Hebrews 13, 20 through 21, quote, through the blood of the eternal covenant, the covenant, even Jesus our Lord, God will equip us in everything to do his will. God equips us when we believe Jesus. His work, his power works through us. Again, through the life of Christ who gave his blood for us, we are being prepared to glorify Father through Christ. It is all about Jesus, the covenant. And the more we grasp that, the more we will live in and enjoy the blessings that are ours in him. Jesus speaks to us in his love. Return, let's return to chapter 12, and then I'll pick up to it with verse 25. The Word of God. See to it that you do not refuse him who is speaking. No, do not refuse him. And it doesn't mean just that uh, the, the image of a person saying, no, I don't want to have anything to do with him, refusing him. Yes, of course it includes that. But it, it's, re, it's refusing to believe him. It, if you're refusing to believe him talking to us, what he says to us, what his, that his word is speaking to us and for us. We need him. And so we need to go to him. We need to seek him. So, God will equip us with everything to do His will as we seek Him. But, and, but this, uh, in chapter 12, verse I'm looking at now, says, See to it that you do not refuse Him who is speaking. Jesus is speaking. He's speaking blessings. He's speaking kingdom life, hope, power. He's speaking joy and fellowship, and he's speaking a caution out of his love for us and his knowledge of what's coming. He's speaking a caution for we need to receive the wonderful and supernatural things he is speaking to us. If we refuse to hear, to heed, to seek him, to believe him, we may become like others who did not escape when he shook their nation. So the verses continue. God said yet once more. And remember. Who needs to be reminded. We are in shaking times. God says yet once more. I will shake not only the earth. But also the heaven. Removing those things which can be shaken in order that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. You in the covenant with Jesus, the unshakable king. Unshakable you, won't that be? Jesus, the covenant, gives us the unshakable kingdom. Verse 28 says, let us have grace. So let us hear him. Let us believe him. And receive all the love, peace, joy, and abundance of heavenly things which come through, come through God's chosen covenant to God's chosen people. That is, those who will believe Him. May the Word of God write His truth in your heart and you rise higher in Him today. Bless you.